What is going on everybody, Zionic here, and in today's video, we're going to dive into some of the Pokemon who got updates for the new Season 9 to see if they can actually perform well in the meta. They go from Spice to Nice um, here, and we're going to specifically be covering the Great League as um, starting at 1pm Pacific Standard Time, we are going to see Season 8 and Season 9 begin. So do not forget to put down a star piece. You will get a lot of stardust um, as a bonus as well because of complications that happened earlier in the season with stardust rewards, if you guys remember that. All right, so as you guys may know, um, we saw some attack changes when it comes to stuff like Weather Ball, Crunch, Zap Cannon, Scald, Feather Dance, and Mega Horn. We also saw new moves being added to Pokemon. First up is gonna be Cofagrigus. This thing literally went from being non-existent in the meta, right? Rank 662 with Astonish, Shadow Ball, and Dark Pulse to being one of the now meta Pokemon that you guys are gonna see a lot of, and that is due to Shadow Claw. So what we can do here is I have the simulation against all Pokemon in the Great League. Hopefully you guys can see it, yeah. You guys can see it over there. This is with Astonish, right? So it had a 19% win rate against all of the Great League Pokemon um, with Astonish, Shadow Ball, and Dark Pulse. Now, one thing to note is it needed a better fast move. Look at its stats right here. It's got very high defense, which means it's extremely bulky, and Shadow Ball and Dark Pulse do so well against the meta outside of something like an Umbreon, for example. So what we're gonna do now is we give this thing Shadow Claw, which gives it way more damage and way more energy gain, and we see it went from 19% to 73% win rate. It went from spice, like below spice to super nice. So this is gonna be a Pokemon you guys will see a lot of in the meta. If you wanna counter this, it's gonna be dark type Pokemon. Remember its moveset, um, it has Dark Pulse, Psychic, and Shadow Ball. Um, so it's gonna be the other one. So dark type Pokemon will be resisting everything. So if you wanna counter this thing, bring dark type Pokemon such as Shiftry or Umbreon or Obstagoon. Um, heck, even Wigglytuff because of the normal typing will do pretty well. Um, but yeah, dark type Pokemon are gonna be a great counter to this. But outside of that, this thing can put a hurt on the meta. So this thing is the number one from spice to nice here for the Great League. Next up, we're gonna talk about Manectric. Manectric at first, I didn't think was gonna do too well, considering it's getting Thunder Fang and Overheat. And in my head, I'm like, it's just Manectric, whatever, it's not gonna do well. What I forgot is that it has access to Snarl, and by getting Overheat, it now becomes a core breaker to Azumarill and Galarian Stunfisk. So as we can see here, it has the fast move of Snarl. It also has Wild Charge, Flame Burst, possibly Return if you purify it or if you keep it a shadow, which is nice. Thunder, Wild Charge, and Overheat. Now, PV Poke rankings do not show Manectric or Cofagrigus um, having their new move, so you won't see it there. So what you have to do is go to the battle section and do a multi-battle. Now, with Snarl, Wild Charge, and Overheat in the one shields, it doesn't have the best win rate, but understand this thing is a glass cannon. This thing has low defense and low HP, but very solid attack. And these charge moves absolutely hurt the meta. So what we're gonna do is change this to a custom meta. We're gonna put it at Great League so you guys can see kind of how it performs. And what I see with this Pokemon is firstly, it's either gonna be getting shields from your opponents or it's going to be sweeping when it has shield advantage, primarily in the one to zero late game. So as we can see right here, if we put this in the one shield to zero shield, so this is gonna be your closer, basically, what you see is it has a 78% win rate and the things it loses to are basically the Mud Boys, the water ground type Pokemon who are gonna be resisting Wild Charge and resisting Overheat. Outside of that, it's gonna be destroying everything. The Steels, the Grass, the Waters, the Flyings, the Fires, the it just absolutely wrecks. It destroys Azumarill as well as we can see right here with Wild Charge. But again, it's very glassy, so you have to watch out. You have to have shield advantage. That's what's important with this thing. So you may not necessarily win the fight, but you can still set yourself up with shield advantage to close out with something else. So if you decide to safe swap a Manectric or you decide to lead with it, um, you will be getting shields outside of basically Mud Boys, right? Whizcash and Swampert being the most prevalent. But this thing, Wild Charge, does 70% of Azumarill's health. And if we look at Stunfisk, Galarian Stunfisk as well, um, Overheat, 
let's just go ahead and simulate that. Overheat is going to be doing 89%, basically 90% of Galarian Stunfist health. So you guys can kind of see this thing is going to be a glass cannon. You can either close well with a 1-0 to zero shield, or you can get shield advantage with it. So I think you will definitely be seeing this on a lot of spicy teams. Um, but if you want to hard counter this, bring a Mud Boy, bring a Whizcash or a Swamper. All right, next up, we have Scald. So Scald got an upgrade um, being a lower energy cost, which we don't know how much. And it also has a chance to lower the opposing Pokemon's attack. So what we're going to do is we're going to take a look at other moves um, that may be similar. And the biggest thing I can think about is going to be Octazooka. Now, Octazooka is going to be 50 energy and 50 damage. Whereas, um, where is it? Uh, Scald here. Scald is going to be 80, 60, but this is before the update, right? So it says it's going to energy cost is going to be decreased and it's going to provide a chance to lower the opposing Pokemon's attack. And it doesn't say drastically. So what I think this might be is it may be like a 55 or 50 energy move. Let me get back to here. So if it's at 60 energy right now, we may see it just drop to 55. We may in, in bonus terms, like ideally we'd see it go to 50. And then when it comes to... Um, the effects, because it doesn't say dramatically, which is what Leaf Tornado Octazooka says, what I see this being is something like Mirror Shot or Muddy Water. I think it might be a 30% chance if we're going with this. So it could have better damage than Octazooka with only minus one. That's kind of what I see it there. And this is going to be on... This is going to be on Vaporeon if you got it from Community Day. This is on Legacy Poliwhirl, but it's also going to be on Poliwrath, which I think is one of the big ones um, that it's going to have. Because Poliwrath, when it comes to its movesets, um, which we can take a look at right here. Go ahead and put in Poliwrath. Poliwrath has very versatile movesets. So what you can see here, um, it has Mudshot as a fast move, which is ideal for it because you have access to Dynamic Punch, Ice Punch, and Hydro Pump, as long as Power Up Punch, but that doesn't really work well with having Mudshot as a fast move. So what this basically is going to directly replace is going to be Hydro Pump. So basically you might see a lot of Poliwraths running with Ice Punch and Scald, and it can do very, very well on the meta. Things it has to watch out for is basically like Azumarill, right? Because it can't do any kind of neutral damage there. Dynamic Punch, Ice Punch, Hydro Pump, and Scald are all resisted because of the Fairy Water typing. But this thing still, I think, is going to have an impact, especially since it can take down Bastiodons and Galarian Stunfist. You have Neutral with Scald with a chance to debuff as well. So as long as you have other team members that can take down basically your biggest threat being Azumarill, um, when it comes to being able to do damage, this team can do potentially very well, or not the team, the Pokemon can do potentially very well. And again, just looking at what we have already, I think it might be a worse effect when it comes to Octazooka, but higher damage. So that's going to be something like a mirror shot merge with Octazooka, basically, which is going to be nice. Now, when it comes to the other thing, we have Crunch. So when we take a look at the moves that got updated, Crunch is on a lot of very strong, like fringe meta Pokemon, especially for Great League Remix, which is coming um, right out the gate. Crunch users are going to be very strong in the meta. They were already strong before, like Drapion and Skunk Tank. They're going to be stronger now because it now has a chance of lowering the opposing Pokemon's defense. So if we take a look at what that means, we can kind of see what the effects does. And I think this is going to be similar to Shadow Bone. So 20% chance to um, give minus one to your defense of the opponent. Um, it could be maybe like Bub Buzz, maybe it's a 30%, but honestly, it's going to be, I think, somewhere in that realm of 20 to 30. Now, we don't usually see a lot of procs on a Lonely Marowak Shadow Bone. It happens every now and then, but a 20% chance is a 1 in 5. Um, so when we take a look at users, especially this is going to be for Great League overall, but you can see that I think our two biggest winners here um, are going to be Skunk Tank and Drapion when it comes to not only Great League meta, but Great League Remix. These guys absolutely destroy Charmers. They destroy Azumarill. They do well against Galarian, Stunfisk, or other tanks because of stuff like Flamethrower or Aqua Tail. Now, adding on Crunch and the potential um, with the debuff as well could be very, very deadly. So be on the lookout for those guys, especially in the Great League Remix Cup. 
We also see it's on like stuff like Frostlass and Steelix. Steelix um, is strong and I think that Crunch might really help it out, but there are currently better tanks in the open Great League such as Bastiodon and Galarian Stunfisk. Frostlass as well will always pretty much run Shadow Ball Avalanche. Um, Crunch might be used instead of Shadow Ball, um, but it loses some of its um, harder coverage um, to different Pokemon. But Honestly, I think that you just can't be surprised that some of these Pokemon are going to rise up. Maybe like Gyarados that has Crunch. Maybe Surviper that has Crunch. Heck, maybe even Feraligatr, right? There's a lot of spicy Pokemon that can go from spicy to nice because of this crunch update so be on the lookout for that those were the updates those are the things to look out for when it comes from spice to nice kafa grigus um crunch users high um scald users and then manectric as well um, manectric and kafa grigus i think are the two most exciting ones out the gate that i see having a big impact and being fun to use so i hope you guys enjoyed today's video again do not forget to drop a star piece for end of season rewards. So I hope you guys enjoyed today's video and like always, thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next one.